Hello everyone. So today we will continue discussing the construction of rubrics. But before you listen to this discussion, you have to watch first the first part of this rubric construction so that you will be able to understand the prerequisite skills or prerequisite tasks that you have to do before you construct the rubric. Because the first procedure is that you have to understand and you have to develop the task design according to the target competency that you would like to develop from your students. So, in our first video, the topic that we have discussed or the design of the task that we had there is reciting a poem, all things right and beautiful. So, do on sa competency na ginawa natin general objective, we had there, we placed there, the student should be able, during the activity, the student should be able to recite the poem, all things right and beautiful. So we are going now to construct a rubric about or in relation to the design task, which is to recite a poem. We have already identified the skills during the previous video, so we are going to connect the skills that we have identified to our rubric. But before that, let me discuss the parts of a rubric and the types of a rubric. Remember that there are two types of a rubric. The first type is what we call analytic. While the second one is called holistic. So I will repeat. There are two types of rubric. One is analytic. The other one is holistic. What is an example of an analytic uh, rubric? The analytic rubric is the one that we are going to do today or discuss today. Yun ang gagawin natin. Um, the analytic rubric, that's why it's called analytic, is because we analyze the performance of the student based on the skills, the specific skills in every level of development. Hindi natin siya lagong na sinasabi kung ano yung performance ng bata. Kung hindi, iniisa-isa natin sa bawat skill kung ano yung standing niya o kung ano yung performance niya. For instance, when one of the skill is mastery or memorization, doon sa skill natin na nakalagay sa first video natin, memorization yon. This is, when we do that as a criteria, you don't write memorization, but you most likely write mastery. Now, since mastery means memorization, Ang um, ano ang gagawin natin dito? I-check natin kung analytic ang rubric mo, i-check natin kung ano yung level of performance niya dun sa specific na skill na yon. Kung ilan ang naging error niya. Kung excellent ba siya, kung satisfactory ba siya, or kung poor siya. Ganun yung analytic rubric. Chine-check mo sa bawat criteria kung ano yung performance niya. Sa holistic rubric, holistic means full. Lahatan. You give a general conclusion about the performance of the learner. Meaning, you co correlate, you correlate all of the criteria and put down into one decision. How is that? For instance, if it is all about um, all about focusing the microscope to the specimen, it's either perfect or zero. Meaning, when you did not Focus it, then zero siya. Kapag na-focus niya, perfect yung score niya. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na holistic rubric. Okay. So, kapag ka na-comply na lahat, yung hinihingi dito sa indicators ng, sorry, doon sa descriptor ng excellent, nun lang natin masasabi na excellent siya. Pero kung isa dun sa mga descriptions ng criteria ay hindi niya na-comply, hindi siya pwede tawagin na excellent. So, down na kaagad sa satisfactory. Pag meron isa doon na hindi niya na-meet ulit, pupunta na siya sa poor. Ganun ang holistic rubric. I'll give you another insight about that later. But now, let us proceed with the discussion of how we are going to construct 
our rubric considering the task that we have designed before in the first video. Now, the task that we have designed before is performance-based and it is process-oriented. Why process-oriented? Because we are going to evaluate during the time of performance. So how do we develop that? The parts of an analytic rubric or rubric in general, every rubric has this part. There are two essential parts, the criteria and the level of performance. Both analytic and holistic rubric have a criteria and a level of performance. This is the criteria. You write it in the first column. So the criteria here are mastery, pronunciation, intonation, gestures, and eye contact. So all of this criteria came from the skills that we have identified during the time that we are designing the task. When we design the task, we said that in order for a person to be said or to be evaluated as good in reciting a poem, he should be able to memorize, memorize the poem. So therefore, that's mastery. Should have an accurate and a clear pronunciation. So nandito rin siya. And then, he should have the use of appropriate voice inflection. Voice inflection is not something that everybody understands. So we are going to use the lay term there. And what we're going to use is intonation. Gestures refers to the hand and body movement. Pwede hindi ito ang galingin mo kasi it might be confusing to the um, user. So you may write here as the criteria hand and body movement. And then lastly, you can have eye contact. Okay? Ito yung mga skills na na-identify natin last time doon sa designing ng task natin. At yung mga skills na yun, yun ang nagiging criteria ng ating competency. So that's the first part of your rubric and that's an essential part of every rubric. There has to be a criteria. The next one is, the next essential part is yung pinatawag natin level of performance. As in level of performance, ito yung level of performance. Yun yung 3, 2, 1, excellent, satisfactory, poor. Depende sa inyo, pwede siyang apat ang scale niya. 4, 3, 2, 1, pwede rin lima. Um, pwede siyang outstanding, very satisfactory, satisfactory. And then poor, pwede apat. Pwede lima, depende kung ilan ang gusto nyo. Pwede rin yan good, bad, or anything that you want to use as an indicator of performance. So, yun yung dalawang essential um, criteria and level of performance. Pero sa analytic rubric, may distinct siya ng mga parts pa. At ano yung mga distinct parts ng level, ah sorry, ng analytic rubric. Ito yun. Kung mapapansin niyo, meron ditong space at ilalagyan natin yan ng X. Ano yung X na yan? Ang tawag natin dito ay this is what we call multiplier. Later on, makikita ninyo na ito ay ginagamit para malaman kung ilang porsyento o ilan ang scoring criteria noong bawat nakalagay dito na skills or criteria itself. Okay? Kung ito ba ay um, 20% or 6 ang kanyang multiplier or 30% depende sa inyo mamaya yun. Okay? Now, aside from that, we also have what we call indicators. When do we use indicators? If the criteria features more than just two characteristics or more than one, sorry. If the criteria shows more than one description or it indicates more than one thing, then you write down an indicator. Ibig sabihin, yung criteria mo, maraming ibig sabihin nun. Example, content. What do you mean by content? If that's the criteria, content, kailangan mo ng indicators doon. Kasi content may convey relevance, it may also convey organization of thoughts. It may also convey um, continuity of idea or other things. Depende, no? 
So, kinakailangan mo ng indicators. Ano ang example natin ng indicator dito? Yung criteria natin ng pronunciation, it doesn't entail accurate pronunciation. It also entails clear pronunciation. Yung naiintindihan. Kaya may dalawa tayong criteria. Clarity and accuracy. At itong dalawa na ito, ito yung tinatawag natin na indicators. Okay? Now, ang last natin na part ng criteria, oh, sorry, ang last natin na part ng analytic rubric ay yung tinatawag natin na descriptors. Ang descriptor ay description ng criteria in every level of performance. I will repeat. The descriptor is is the description of the criteria. This is example the criteria mastery in every level of performance. Meaning, you describe mastery which is excellent. Yung nilagay mo doon, yun yung pinatawag natin na descriptor. Okay? So, ito yun. Yung mga nakalagay sa bawat criteria at katapat na level of performance. Descriptors ang tawag natin. Okay, so we are now familiar with the different parts of our rubric and now we are ready to develop our rubric. Okay, so these are just the general rules, be general rules before you start doing your rubric. First, make sure all the criteria could be easily understood by your readers, by the one who will evaluate. Why? It should be that the rubric that you will give is something that is understood even if he is not the one who made the rubric. Hindi yung magiging subjective yung judgment nila. Na iba yung understanding ng evaluator 1 sa evaluator 2. Is there really unfamiliar words which is, kumbaga, hindi mo talaga po pwede hindi ilagay doon to write down a legend. Legend doon sa baba explaining or no doon sa baba explaining what it means. Okay? That's the first criteria. It has to be understood even if the evaluator is not within the specialization. Okay? The next criteria, also meaning the next rule is the reason why you may make a rubric is in order for you to avoid bias. So meaning, the descriptors, the second rule is that the descriptors has to be something that is truly measurable. It shouldn't be vague, it shouldn't be flowery in words, it shouldn't be something that, that has to be analyzed pa by the reader. But when the one evaluating reads the descriptor of the criteria, he will fully understood what it means. Una-una, hindi sobrang haba ang descriptor, hindi confusing, at very specific. That's the second rule. The third rule is that as long as you can quantify, quantify, quantify. Ulit ko ha, meaning nabibila. Hanggat kaya mong bilangin, i-quantify mo yung descriptor. Okay? Why? Kasi as long as you can quantify, it means that you will be fair in grading. Kasi nabilang mo talaga na yun yung number of error. Kasi nabilang mo talaga na yun yung nakalimutan niya. So, as long as you can quantify, quantify it. That's the third rule. The fourth rule is that if you cannot quantify, you may use qualifiers. What are qualifiers? You may use some, uh, sometimes, you may use most, you may use often, you may use few, okay? You may use some. Pero ito yung category, ah, most, most, categorically, in order for you to avoid bias, most would mean more than 50%, okay? Some would mean roughly 50%, okay? And few would mean less than 50%, okay? So, kapag ka, hindi ko talaga pinakaya na bilangin, pwede mong i-check. Mostly ba nang sinabi niya ay erroneous? Or konti lang yung error? Meaning, more than 50% ba ay tama naman? 
So, pag more than 50% ay tama naman, then most of what he said is correct. Yun yung top natin. Okay? So, yun yung last natin na rule. Um, at the same time, you have to remember na kung, kung may pagkakataon na, na hindi mo malagyan yung panggit na o may part ka ng level of performance na hindi na malagyan, pwede naman. Example, isa sa criteria mo ay promptness. Ibig sabihin, on time mag-submit ng um, activity niya o kaya naman ng mga project niya. Pwede dalawa lang na extreme na position. Pwede doon sa excellent, submitted within the, specific, the, within the specified deadline. Tapos doon naman sa zero o doon sa one o doon sa four, ang iyong descriptor doon ay submitted after the deadline or is late in submission. So dalawa lang, wala pang panggit na. Okay? So yun yung tinatawag natin na um, no central position. Extreme position lang doon sa descriptor na group. Okay? So, with those rules, let us now start constructing our rubric. So, look at it carefully. Okay. Now, for our first criteria, which is mastery, we have to understand that we are developing a rubric about the recitation of a poem. And sabi natin, ang mastery doon ay memorization. Nandoon sa rubric maker kung ano ang gusto niyang mangyari sa grading niya. Posible, since ang tinitignan natin dito ay memorization, ibig sabihin nito, andun sa criteria natin, dun sa last video, sabi natin, the student should be able to recite the poem without reading notes. So, ibig sabihin, dapat memorize niya entirely. Ngayon, ang tanong, pag sinabing excellent, mag-aalaw ba kayo ng error or hindi? Kasi, pwede mo siyang bilangin. Pwede mo malaman ilan yung salitang nakalimutan niya. Ilan yung lines na nakalimutan niya. Kung excellent, halimbawa, perfectionist yung rubric mo. Or gusto mo talaga ako sa inyo nasa criteria. Eh. They should not have any error. So, pwede mo ilagay dito ay... All lines and words in the poem are memorized. Okay? Pwede mong ilagay doon. Pero kung mag-aalaw ka naman ng um, error, dahil ang hiniisip mo, ah, grade 4 students, oh, pupils lang ito. Grade 4 lang yung mga learners ko. Kasi all things bright and beautiful from grade 4. Grade 4 lang ang mga learners ko. Okay naman na na magkaroon sila ng kahit pa paano nakalimutan na hanggang 1 to 5 words. So, yun ang ilalagay mo. Kung yun ang gusto mo, ang susulat mo dito ay forgets 1 to 5 words. Yun yung excellent sa memorization. Okay? Kung hanggang 5 words dito, sa satisfactory, ilan naman ang allowable mo? So, kung pwede mong sabihin dito na forgets 6 to 5 words. Okay? And lastly, dito sa for, syempre, ang maglalagay mo na dito ay forgets more than Sorry, 6 to 10 to. Forgets, to do sa satisfactory, ha? correction lang ha, forgets 6 to 10 words. Sa so, poor, since 6 to 10 dito, dapat ang lalagay mo na dito, forgets more than 10 words. Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag natin na pataan ng paggawa ng descriptor. So, pagka naman nakita nyo yan, madali na ang lahat. So, tignan natin dun sa pronunciation. So, we have here clarity and accuracy. Magkaniwalay na siya ng descriptor. So, sa clarity, tignan natin mabuti. When we say clarity, it means that the words are pronounced clearly. Meaning, 
naiintindihan mo yung sinabi niya, naririnig mo na maayos. May mga pagkakataon kasi na tama yung sinasabi niya, tama yung pronunciation niya, pero dahil sa sobrang pagka-pronounce, na sobrang ganda ng pronunciation, hindi mo na maintindihan. And the purpose of communication is for you to understand what is being said, what is being pronounced or recite, recited. Now, let us see. Clarity. Can you count it or not? Can you count words which are clear and unclear? So, the answer is, of course, yes, you can count it. Are you going to allow error of clarification? Or, sorry, of clarity, not clarification. Error in the clarity or problems in the clarity. Kung dito, nag-allow ka, syempre, mag-allow ka na rin. Kailangan, ano siya yun, kumbaga, may system. Kumbaga, dapat, nasimulan mo sa ganun, ganun din ang pag-iisip. Agad na siya ko throughout. So, sa pronunciation, you may write, kung nag-allow ka ng 1 to 5 din, halimbawa, or 1 to 3, sabihin na natin na 1 to 5 din. 1, 2, 5, Words are not clearly pronounced. Kung makikita nyo, negative na yung statement natin dito sa second criteria kasi nag-start tayo ng negative statement nung sinabi natin forgets. So, dire-direction na na ganun yung magiging statement natin sa descriptors. So, kung 1 to 5 dyan, halimbawa, dito naman ay 6 to 5 words are not clearly pronounced. Ah, sorry, 6 to 10. Bakit pa 6 to 5 pala? So, dito, um, more than 10 words are not clearly pronounced. Tatapusin yung sentence ng descriptor nyo. Kasi yung iba, pag alam na ganyan, 1 to 5 words, 6 to 10 words, more than 10 words, ganun na lang. Susunod na lang nila, ang binubuo lang na lang nila, yung first na level of performance. So, sa dulo, wala na. Ang nakalagay nila, 6 to 10. More than 10. Kasi it follows naman daw. But no, you have to finish the rubric. Kailangan sulat na lahat. Next, accuracy. When it comes to accuracy, can you count it or not? Yun yung tanong na kaya bang i-count or hindi kaya i-count? Kung kaya i-count, ganun lang din. Kasi maninig mo naman kung ilan yung accurate na pronunciation. So, Sabihin mo lang ulit dito, kung gusto mong 1 to 3, pwede naman. Pero dito, sabihin natin halimbawa, 1 to 5 words are mispronounced. Next, 6 to 10 words are mispronounced. Then, more than 10 words are mispronounced. Now, we move to intonation. Okay? For intonation, can you count the number of rising and falling intonation if it is Accurate, meaning, ang idea natin dito kasi sa intonation, doon sa ating specific objective, the student during the recitation of the poem should have created an ambience about the poem. Meaning, he should have created a story based on the expression of emotion using the right falling and rising of intonation. So, kaya ba natin bilang ito? Of course, we cannot. Dito na yung mag-talk 
qualifier tayo at hindi tayo gagamit ng qualifier. Anong ibig sabihin na hindi tayo gagamit ng qualifier? Ibig sabihin nun, yung qualifier na yon gagamit tayo na, pwede na tayo gumamit dito ng most, some, and few. Okay? So, dito, syempre sa intonation, ah, sorry, sa excellent, under intonation, negative yung gagamitin natin, di ba? So, sa excellent, um, few, few, para masabi mong excellent pa rin siya, few, inappropriate, intonations were used. Few inappropriate intonations were used. So meaning, nagigay natin R ako siguro, R yung binanit natin yung sa simula. Ibig sabihin dito, kung few ang intonation na inappropriate, so ibig sabihin dito, more than 50% ng intonation niya ay tama. Nakakapag-express naman ng emotion. Okay? So, the next one, dun sa number 2, sa number 2, ang gagamitin naman natin ay some inappropriate intonations are used. Pero dito sa last, ang ilagay mo na dito, huwag most monotone. May mga pagkakataon kasi talaga na wala. Isa lang, flat lang yung tono ng mga studyante mo. So, yung monotone mo na yun. Para dito medyo mabalik-balik ka naman ng konti doon sa satisfactory. Kung meron ko mindayo naman ng konti yung boses, o at least mamunda siya dun sa 2. Pero kung from the start until the end, ay para siyang sleeping pills na isa lang ang kanyang tono, monotone. Okay? Next, number 4, we have gestures. Meaning, the hand and body movement. Okay? So, sa excellent natin, paano natin sasabihin? So, we can say here na, um, Siyempre, hindi din natin tumabibilang. Okay? So, ang gagamitin din natin, since nagagamit tayo ng start, few hand and body movements are inappropriate. Few hand and body movements are inappropriate for the pole. Dito naman, syempre, some hand and body movements are inappropriate. Dito naman, most. Hand and body movements are inappropriate. And last for eye contact, dito sa dulo ang pinakamadali dyan, no eye contact. Pwede kang magdalawa na lang dito. Pwede kang magdalawa na lang dito kung gusto mong maging mabait na uses eye contact. Basta may eye contact, whether appropriate or not. Pero kung gusto mo pa rin maging mabait, pwede kang maglagay dito na uses appropriate eye contact. Tapos dito, ang ilagay mo na lang dito ay some eye contacts are inappropriate. And then dito, no eye contact. are not necessary para hindi po pwedeng para hindi nang po inappropriate. Dito siguro, ilagay na natin na um, this 
sa clarity, satisfactory, sa accuracy, satisfactory din, sa intonation, ala mo na itong si Juan. So, you suggest chores na na, okay siya, ang galing niya na magkumpas-kumpas ng kamay at maayos ang kanyang eye contact. For example, yan ang, yan ang result ng recitation ni Juan. How are we going to score this? Excellent siya. So, 6 times 3 equals 18. Next, clarity 3 times 2 kasi ay yung check. 6. Accuracy 4 times 2, 8. Intonation 3 times 1 is 3. And then here 2 times 3 is 6. And 2 and 3 is 6. This will be the score of 1. So, how many will be the score? 6, 12, 18, 21, 29, 37. So, ang score niya ay 47. Scene 1 ay nakakuha ng score dito sa activity na ito, which is 47 over 60. Yun ang score niya. Gusto mong malaman kung excellent ba siya o satisfactory. Very basic lang yun. So, 60 ito. 60 divided by 3, you have 20. So, ang gagawin mo lang for the score na 1 to 20, that's 4. Sorry, 1 to 19, 4. 20 to 49, satisfactory. 30. Sorry, 20 to 39 satisfactory and 40 to 60, that is excellent. So, basically, dun sa score na yan, makikita mo na yung 47 ay nandito sa excellent. So, si 1 ay excellent. Okay? So, that's how you construct a rubric. Ganyan yung kung paano mo gawin So, I hope you've learned something today. So, maybe your teachers will give you exercises. This is the same process as how you construct a rubric in product-oriented performance-based assessment. Ngayon, paano yung holistic rubric? Ganito siya. Ang holistic rubric, echo siya. Tanggalin nyo lahat itong mga ito. Uh, itong criteria na to, sorry. Tanggalin nyo itong criteria at yung multiplier. Ang holistic rubric, echo na. Excellent. Ang criteria niya ay yung descriptor. Okay? Kaya siya tinawag na holistic. Kung halimbawa, i-degrade natin si Juan ngayon, at sa excellent, meron siyang na-miss out. Excellent. Ay, hindi niya nagawa ito. Yung 1 to 5 words lang ang hindi clear. Kasi naka-7 errors siya dito. So basically, since hindi niya na-meet itong type ng criteria na ito, dun na siya sa satisfactory. Kasi sa satisfactory, meron din siyang hindi na-meet yung intonation, naging monotone siya. Dahil holistic ang rubric mo, kahit na isa lang yung hindi na meet ni Juan, doon sa excellent at satisfactory, hindi siya pwedeng magkaroon ng evaluation na gano'n, evaluation result. Ang result ng evaluation niya ay poor. Bakit poor? Kasi may nakuha siya na isang criteria doon sa poor. Ganun ang holistic rubric. So, you really would like to develop talaga the skills of the learners and you would really like to give feedback kung anong skill doon ang kinakailangan pa niya mas develop, make use of analytic. Okay? So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Um, we hope that you've learned something. Bye.